In today's macro photography tutorial, we're going to take a look at what mushrooms look like under UV light. It's going to be a really interesting experiment, so stick around and I'll get started in just a sec. Hi guys, I'm Ben from Adapt Looks, and welcome to another macro photography tutorial. Today we're going to be taking a look at what our mushrooms look like under UV light. It's something that I wanted to try in a video a couple of weeks ago uh, when we took a look at the insides of our mushrooms. I'll link that video up here if you've not seen it. Today we're doing something a little bit different. Instead of taking a look at all of the gills and the ribbed areas on the inside of the mushroom, uh, we're going to be taking a look at the outside. Now, I do have some advanced knowledge here, I have tried this before. The inside of our mushrooms don't react very much to UV light. However, the outside, that's a different story. Especially when you've got mushrooms like mine, which have now been sat around for a couple of days. Uh, they've gone a little bit soft in certain areas, nothing too bad, they're not rotting yet, uh, but there are some interesting uh, changes on the surface of my mushrooms that I want to explore in UV. I'm going to go and grab my UV lighting arms and I'm going to set up in the same way that we did in our last video, down on my coffee table. This setup worked pretty well for my last shoot when I was looking at the insides of the mushrooms. I'm going to be doing pretty much the same thing, but flipping the mushrooms over. That means that my 100mm lens on my Sony a7 III, on my uh, macro rail, on my tripod, it's going to be pretty good for shooting down onto my mushrooms. There is one difference, and that's with our lighting. This time I'm going to be using my Adapter Look Studio down on the uh, stabilizer. I'm not going to need quite as much vertical uh, versatility with my lighting, I'm not going to be trying to get any light into my mushrooms this time. So keeping a nice low profile with my, uh, my studio and my lighting arms, it's going to work really well for just getting some light onto the outside of my mushrooms. When I say light, I'm using that pretty liberally. Of course, we're using UV, which is technically not visible light, but the effect uh, does create visible light. So we're going to be looking at visible light, capturing visible light through our camera. That means your camera doesn't need any kinds of modifications at all. If you want to know a little bit more about UV IVF photography, which is the type of UV photography we're doing today, I'll link a video up here which will tell you uh, the differences between the two different types of UV photography and get you started on UV IVF. The way that I'm going to be doing it is using our UV lighting arms. These plug into the control pod and provide a pure UV light source. The trouble with UV IVF photography and a pure UV light source is that it needs to be used in complete darkness. We don't want any extra visible light uh, being captured by our camera other than that which is created by the subject itself, in this case our mushrooms. That's what's going to create the interesting effect, is the differences in the colours and the brightnesses of the light which is created by the surface of the mushroom. And you might be thinking, it can't be that interesting, can it? The surface of a mushroom, it's just brown. Well, I think we're going to be proved wrong. I think all of these different uh, types of browns, all of these different little textures on here are going to glow interesting colours when exposed to UV light. Now, of course, I know that that's the case, I've done some tests. And what I found during my tests was that uh, the insides of the mushrooms, they glow quite a lot, especially these small little uh, woodland mushrooms. As we saw when I was shooting with white light, the white interior of the mushrooms reflects that light quite nicely. When it comes to UV light though, it glows uh, an incredible amount actually, these particular mushrooms, but all uniformly. Everything is quite even in terms of its brightness and its colour. So the camera will, uh, if you leave it on automatic, adjust the colour temperature to be white and all of the brightness will be quite even, almost as if we were using regular white light. Although that might be interesting to some, it's not going to create the kind of interesting UV IVF shots that I'm looking for with a lot of variation in their colour and their brightness depending on the makeup of the subject. 
So shooting the insides of the uh, the mushrooms, although they're great and they do glow quite a lot, they don't give me the variation that I'm looking for. The outsides of the mushrooms, though, do exactly that. As you can see from those first few shots, we're getting a huge amount of variation from the surface of our mushrooms. All of these different bits of brown and the different softness and uh, varying states of growth and decay that's going on on the surface of my mushroom, they all create different intensities of light, different colors of light. I think some of them almost look like uh, beach scenes, those aerial shots that you get from tropical islands of those blue waters washing in and out of the beaches and the coral reefs. The actual taking of the picture takes place in darkness. We'll get to that in a minute, but first we need to compose and focus our image. So I'm finding an interesting spot on my, uh, on my mushroom surface that I want to take a look at in UV, and I'm going to focus on it. If you've got an autofocus lens, by all means, use your autofocus to find that correct focus but then you're going to need to turn it to manual mode. Uh, using your autofocus in the dark, your camera might try and compensate and refocus. You don't want that because you're going to then obviously lose your focus and you won't be able to find it again once you turn your lights out. Mine's a manual lens, so I just focus where I want it to be and then make sure not to touch it again. Once you're happy with your composition and you've found a spot on your mushroom that you want to investigate a little bit more, you need to set up your lighting. I'm using two UV lighting arms here. I'm using two because uh, you still get shadows using UV light. Two arms coming from two different directions will make sure that the curvature of the surface of my uh, mushroom, um, it doesn't create any unwanted shadows. I want full coverage of UV light on the surface of my mushroom. The last step is to turn out the lights and take your picture. I'm setting my camera to have a long exposure of 20 to 30 seconds. Uh, yours will depend on how close you have your UV lighting arms and how fluorescent your particular subject is. I'm using a low ISO to cut down on the grain and just a middle of the road f-stop at about f8 so that we can get enough of our mushroom in focus. I'm going to take a couple more pictures and see if I can't get any even more variation on the surface of my mushroom. I did say that my mushrooms aren't rotten, they are only a couple of days out of the supermarket. However, uh, I have found one area of one of my mushrooms that is a little softer than I would normally like. Uh, it is doing something interesting. I've actually split this in two because uh, there's this weird crevasse in the middle of one of these mushrooms where it's eating away at itself. Splitting it in half reveals all of this sort of soft, juicy mushroom goo. I don't know what that is. It could be, uh, it could be uh, bacteria eating it away or it could be part of the fungus itself. However, it is very interesting under UV. It glows an incredible amount. All of this weird gooey mushroom goop uh, on the inside, it's very, very fluorescent. What that means is, is that you're going to get a great variety of different uh, effects at different stages of the mushroom's uh, growth and decay. If you've got live mushrooms out in the forest, they're going to do some interesting things under UV, um, but also when they're on their way out, they're going to do interesting things again as uh, bacteria start to grow and eat away at the mushrooms. They glow in different ways. Try and look out for this as your mushrooms are getting older. Don't just get them and uh, shoot them once and throw them away. Keep them around for as long as you're comfortable with having rotting mushrooms in your house and uh, see what they do under UV light at different stages of their development. The mushrooms have not done quite what I expected them to do under the UV light. I was expecting the insides and all of those uh, very fine detailed gills to do a lot more under the UV, a lot more variation, and I wanted to capture all of those fine details in UV. As it turns out, the outside of the mushrooms 
It's much more interesting under UV. I'm really enjoying seeing all of the different variations of colors as the outside of the, uh, the mushroom's texture changes between different areas. It's almost like photographing aerial landscapes on a globe. It's not the kind of thing that you expect to see when you're taking that long exposure and it finally pops up the back of the screen and everything's a different color and uh, a different brightness to it, how it was before with those um, browns everywhere. It gets really interesting. Let me know what you think to uh, these UV shots in the comments down below and give the video a like if you enjoyed it. If you want some more UV content, finding all of these interesting effects going on in different subjects, go and check out some of our other videos. We've got UV uh, lichen, we've got UV uh, plants and flowers all over the place and they all do really interesting things when exposed to UV light. That's all that I've got time for for now though guys. Thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you next time.